Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a special installment of the VIB News Attack. I'm here with Marty Brown, former Vallejo council member and patron saint of participatory budgeting in the city of Vallejo, and Chad Allen Ponder Chevenger, actor and international tour guide. Tonight, we'll be discussing participatory budgeting on a night where the hallmark at the townhouse, bar and lounge in exciting downtown Vallejo is participate participation. It's karaoke night, folks, and you can hear it in the background loud and clear. But Marty Brown, what is participatory budgeting for some of our OzCat listeners? And we're broadcasting on OzCat Radio at 89.5, as well as the Vallejo Independent Bulletin at ibvallejo.com. Tell us about participatory budgeting Marty Brown, something that you were instrumental in bringing to our fair city. Well, Mark, first of all, thank you so much for having me um, on your show. Um, PB, as we affectionately call it, uh, is in broad strokes uh, taking a portion of discretionary public funds, giving the public the opportunity to develop uh, project ideas for the city, and then vetting those projects, putting them on a ballot, and simply voting on them. And then the city and other public agencies actually implement those projects um, after the public has decided what they what they want to see. And that could be anything from community gardens to filling potholes to more security cameras to college scholarships, as we saw last year. So the bottom line is you're saying to the people of Vallejo, not show me the money, but let us show you the money and decide how to spend it. Exactly. Right. So tell me a little bit about PB. We're in the second year of participatory budgeting in the city of Vallejo. Um, the budget's a little smaller this year than last year. Tell me about that. What's going on? Uh, well, the first year the city council, when I was on the city council, we piloted doing 30% of the 1% sales tax that the voters passed in um, 2011. And we, we piloted that. It was a very successful process. We did run into a few bumps in the road. It was the city's first time doing it. It was also the first citywide participatory budgeting process in North America. And um, I'm, I'm happy to say that we did the largest budget of any single PB process in the United States in 2012 and also had the highest number of vote getters of any PB process. So we went through that process and, and as you can imagine in the city of Vallejo we've got a lot of budgetary challenges and last year the council decided to uh, reduce the amount a little bit. So we went from uh, a 30 percent and turned out to be 3.4 million in cycle one and this year we have 2.4 million to work with. So that's where we are and, and, and now the council is uh, currently considering a cycle three. Well tell me a little bit about uh, what kind of projects uh, happened in cycle one. What kind of things got accomplished uh, in Vallejo, projects that went forward? Well you know I think it was really interesting and in, in the end uh, we ended up with about 33 projects on the ballot and 12 of them um, actually got selected to spend out that and um, it turned out we actually spent about $3 million and we rolled old over the um, excess into this year, which ended up with the 2.4. And those 12 projects really ran the gamut. It was actually pretty remarkable. It was some real what I call meat and potatoes projects like potholes and security cameras and additional lighting. But then it went into things like 10 community gardens and nut nutrition classes across the entire city and uh, things like a scholarship program for uh, Vallejo City uh, high school graduates and a spay neuter program for low-income families. So, you know, what I think we saw from the process is that Vallejo citizens, like a lot of cities that do PB, they want to sprinkle it around. They want to sprinkle the money around to a lot of quality of life issues and spread that money out as much as they can. And, you know, in the end, everybody I talked to after the vote um, and the decision was made felt like they got something. I think as former Vice Mayor Stephanie Gomes said the night the council made the final approval on the public's vote, you know, a lot of times we sit on the council and um, it feels like there's winners and losers. There's some people that get what they want and some people that just don't. And with PB, it felt like everybody got a little something for once. Right. And this was really, as uh, in your time as a council member, um, one of your major projects, something that you very much championed. And uh, it really stands as uh, something in our city that's an example of a, a positive accomplishment. We seem to have gotten a lot of good press and uh, uh, goodwill over this thing. I am absolutely uh, very proud of participatory budgeting, but as I like to often say, any council member just, you know, when they have an idea, it's just an idea. But without four votes, it's nothing. So, you know, I'm 
incredibly grateful to my colleagues on the council that took really a tremendous leap of faith and political courage to actually vote to move forward with PB, and that, that includes former Vice Mayor Gomes and Council Members McConnell and Sampayan that are still currently on the council. Without their support, this never would have happened. Right, and now you're no longer on the city council, but you're still very much engaged in the participatory budgeting process. Uh, you, you're, you're involved in the whole uh, cycle two, and uh, you're acting as a, what is your, your actual role? I am a PB budget delegate. Budget delegate, in okay. The economic, I'm on the uh, Economic Development Committee. Right. Uh, it seems to me, uh, based on uh, the makeup of the current city council and some of the comments from our dear mayor, that the, the PB process is a little bit in peril. Uh, the Oz has made a lot of noises about the, the cost of staff and so on. My impression is he simply does not like it and he wants to maintain control. What are your thoughts about the, the, the makeup on the council and the, the, the prospects and the health of the PB program going forward? Well, I, I, I agree with you that I think that Mayor Davis um, is not, uh, I think he, he's, he's appreciated and recognized some of the benefits of PB, but I also think that um, he's not, you know, a big fan 100% of the way um, and, and probably would like to have the council have purview over those dollars rather than have the public have the right to develop projects and put them on a ballot and vote for them. Um, as far as the, the rest of the council, um, you know, I, I think it remains to be seen. It's a, it's a bit of an open question. I'm, I'm not actually really sure. Um, I, I think that um, Councilmember Meisner, McConnell, and Sampayan are fairly strong supporters. Uh, uh, McConnell and uh, Sampayan both voted for it the last two years in a row, and uh, Councilmember Meisner was also um, on the PB Steering Committee. You know, ironically, uh, so was also Councilmember Ducosta, uh, Verda, Verda Liga, and uh, also Malgapo. All three of them were former PB Steering Committee members. So, you know, I think it's anyone's call to see where this is going to go, but you're absolutely right. It is in peril, and um, the city manager has a proposal that really uh, could could really um, undermine the kind of momentum and enthusiasm and the morale and hope. Well, tell us a little bit about uh, about what that suggestion is and what's proposed right now. Well, I'll start out by first saying that the the last year, the 2013 council of which I was sitting on, um, we uh, made a recommendation on how to spend Measure B monies for the duration of the Measure B, which is until 2022. Right. And let's let's clarify for our listeners. Measure B. It's is a one percent sales tax. Thank you. That was passed by the voters in 2011, and so we we made sort of a it was like a menu uh, recommendation for how to spend the remaining one percent sales tax until 2022, and it included an allocation to PB every year until it expired. Right. And the council, <clears throat> excuse me, the council unanimously um, recommended an allocation starting with this next year, uh, reducing it to 1.5 million, but gradually climbing back up to nearly 2 million again by the end of the cycle. Um, so uh, the city manager came forward on April 22nd in a study session at this year, and, and rather than going forward and presenting to the council last year's recommendation, he uh, proposed that we basically skip a year of PB, kind of put it on hold, and then in addition to that, reduce the allocation next year in the fiscal year of 2015-16 to a million dollars. Well, let's hear from uh, from Chad and kind of get a a man on the street opinion. What do you think about the squeeze on uh, on our participatory budgeting monies? I think it's been a uh, PB has been a successful action for the city of Vallejo. I think that's important, and that ought to be. Um, I, I think that not to recognize that is just a matter of neglect, and uh, because anybody who knows anything about it knows that it's a success, and that it has been a benefit to the community, and that is really has been the goal of city management um, since you know, in the last five years at least. And I think um, that successful action should be maintained. And, it, and I think where you have a success in the community, you should reward it. Absolutely. And that, we, have, we have so many black spots on our, our, our city over the bankruptcy and so on. And this really is a, uh, a shining example of something that we did do that's positive. It's, it's, it is, absolutely. And I think, um, I think the mayor has gotten a lot of credit uh, because it has a this success has occurred under his uh, you know stewardship and I um, 
I'd like to think of him as a steward. I think it's an important word and an important mentality for city servants. And uh, it's an honor and a privilege to serve a community. And there's a lot of people who service this community in a nonprofit and a non in a way that doesn't benefit them uh, monetarily or in any other way. And I think these people um, they put their necks on the line. And when you have a resounding voice from the community, it gives them permission to act and know that the community has their back. So bottom line, Chad, as a, as a member of the community, um, to the mayor and city council regarding PB, what would you say, sum it up? Well, I, I think the community expects the city council and the mayor to have their back and that this is um, gonna send a message to the community either way where they stand, where this new council stands and where the mayor stands and how we're going to move forward and if we're going to continue to move forward in the right direction or if we're going to get uh, back into, you know, one step forward, two steps back. And I think you, it, PB should continue to be funded and it should be increased in funding, not decreased, not cut, not cut from the board and not decreased, but because it should be rewarded by giving more money into the program and uh, providing a uh, better focus for it. And that's, that's just my feeling. And there you have it from Chad Chevinger. Chad Allen Ponder Chevinger, actor, tour guide, and Vallejo resident who cares about the community. So Marty Brown, as, uh, as this moves forward uh, and the issue of PB is in front of the city council more and more, uh, and also the process and the projects, what, what sort of things can people do to, uh, to get involved and to be engaged? Well, first, I just want to say that I couldn't agree more with wholeheartedly with what Chad just said, and we, we really we really have to um, honor and respect the public, and they've given up their time and their effort and their commitment, and, um, you know, the council needs to reciprocate, and reducing the funds year after year is like death by a thousand cuts for PB. If anything, it sends a message to the public that we're actually, we, we don't have your back, and we're not committed to you, but please keep participating. We, we really mean it. You know, please, please come out, even though we're putting less and less money on the table. Uh, moving forward, I think that the you know one of the biggest things um, that people can do is come out and have their you know their voice heard at City Council. The next meeting and 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 it'll be an action item on June 10th before the City Council, and it'll be an opportunity for the public to voice their opinion about whether they want to keep PB or not. And that starts at seven o'clock in Council Chambers. Uh, the the other thing I, I would just say that I, I just want to add that's really troubling to me about this whole process that we're going through right now with PB is um, no one has bothered to ask the city manager to put out another budget proposal that actually respects and honors last year's council recommendation and gives the council an opportunity to see what that budget would look like and how that compares. So, so basically um, what you're saying is that the city council is getting kind of shoehorned into uh, one choice, which is an up or down, rather than choice A, choice B, where we've got one that respects the voters and the initial wishes of the voters, and a second choice, which is a modification for them to look at. That's right, and, and actually, you know, he, he really has the opportunity to do that, but even more importantly than asking the city manager to do it, I would ask the council to do it. It's their responsibility as elected officials to um, honor that commitment to the public and ask the city manager for that kind of a, a, a budget comparison. So that when you're making those tough soapy choices, you really have you know apples to apples, and you can see that this was the trajectory that the former council was was taking you on, and this is the new trajectory that the city manager is proposing. Now, what do you want to do? And the public needs to be at the table and be part of that conversation and discussion. And June 10th is the day to do it. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, from the the lady who made participatory budgeting happen in Vallejo, Marty Brown, former, former council member and the patron saint of participatory budgeting in Vallejo. Democracy for you, for me, and a chance for us, we the citizens, to decide how we spend our money. Be there June 10th and Marty, is there any uh, website address that people can look at for more well, information? Well, they can go to Save PB Vallejo on Facebook, certainly. And there's a petition out there that they can also find at Save PB Vallejo on the Facebook page that um, is at change.org. Um, and you can sign to just ask that the council honor the last year's unanimous council's recommendation to future councils, $1.5 million. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Get online, sign the petition, make your voice heard. Get engaged in democracy, because if you sit in your hands and watch the widescreen TV, you can't complain. Thanks a lot, Marty. Thank you.